All right, guys, so we're still in chapter two, Captives. We've only got a few more chapters left in this part. Uh, so we're going into chapter 17 now. We're going to Cora de Scola. I exchanged a look with Tabla. No, he didn't know what that meant either. And that is, I asked, it's an island city. Its real name is the Isle of Ursina, but everyone calls it Cora de Scola. It means heart of the scholars. Why did they call it that? Tobble asked. It's shaped roughly like a human heart, and it's home to scholars and students. The Imperial Academy of Alchemy, Astronomy, Theurgy, and Science is housed there. I had to digest each word separately. Alchemy, I'd learned from Dalentor, was the art of blending substances to create new substances, like medicines. Astronomy, I thought, had something to do with stars. Theurgy was the study of spells and incantations. And science? I was not sure what that was, but it sounded impressive. Imperial sounded impressive too, until I remembered. Imperial, I cried, as in Merdano, His Imperial Highness, the, Mer the Merdano of Nadara, defender of truth, guardian of righteous peacemaker of the people, and so on and so on and so forth, Kara said, waving her hand. But it was Mardano's soldiers who, you'll see very few soldiers on the aisle, Kara said, wave. Kara said, soldiers aren't welcome there. It's a place of learning. But it's still called the Imperial. He is the Mardano. Everything is his, I suppose. He remade the calendar. He rewrote the dictionary. He has power over everything in Nadara, including the great governing species. Under her breath, she added, at least that's what he thinks. But why are you taking us there, I pressed. I was mindful of my promise not to attempt escape again. I was even more mindful of what would happen when I'd, when I'd tried. But I wasn't about to march to my own death, if that was what Kara had planned. We have to go, Kara said. We have no other options. I don't like this, I said. I've never been to a human city. It sounds too risky. I don't like it either, said Tobble. Kara held up her palms. You have no choice. I won't go, I declared. You realize I could have let the poachers kill you like the Merdano's men. Kara fell silent, avoiding my eyes. I felt daggers in my heart. My imagination conjured pictures, pictures that turned sadness into slow burning anger. I shouldn't have said that, Kara said, and I sensed that she was sincere. She rubbed her eyes. I'm tired, and not speaking as carefully as I should. Forgive me. I gave a little nod, but said nothing. There was nothing to say. Minutes passed. The only sound was Tobble's enthusiastic chewing. I didn't want to speak, but far too many questions were boiling in my brain. I needed answers. So finally, I said, keeping my voice even, your plan is to hand me over to the Merdano? Ha! Kara gave a dark laugh. I'm not exactly on friendly terms with the Merdano or his men. No, I'm taking you to a man I know, a famous scholar, a wise man. His name is Ferrucci the Gara, the Gari. What's a Gari? Tabal asked. A title of honor. It's bestowed only on the greatest scholars. There are men who know all there is to know about the stars or the shape of the world or animals or history. Ferrucci is a good and honest man. I've brought him unusual finds in the past. Finds, I repeated, rare animals or plants. Ferrucci studies ways to protect them. My plan is to take you to him and seek his advice. He'll know what to do with the dare. And why are you bothering to do this, Tobble asked. What do you get out of it? I'm trying to help Bix, Kara said evenly. But if Ferrucci sees fit to reward me for my efforts, I won't argue. So that's your plan, Kara? You're going to sell Bix. Tobble leapt to his feet, whiskers quivering. Bix is my friend, and I hope you understand that I will not let any harm come to her. I told you, said Kara. This is the best I can do. It's only fair to warn you, said Tobble. You do not want to see an angry Wabic. We are fearsome to behold. I am, I in particular, am known for my fierce temper. Thank you, Tobble, I said, but 
Back home, they called me Tavl the Terrible. Kara stared at the ground. She might or might not have been smiling. So sell me it is, I said, to the highest bidder. You think I have choices, Kara's voice was a whisper, when I have none. I have no way, no other way to help Bix. And if helping Bix helps me, so be it. I need the money for my family. I looked at her sharply. It was the first Kara had ever mentioned her family. Why not sell your sword? <clears throat> Tobble asked. Kara pulled the sword a few inches out of its scabbard. This rusty thing? It wasn't rusty when you were dicing up serpents, Tobble pointed out. Kara leaned toward us, her gaze intent. This sword, she said slowly, has been in my family for generations, and I am the first woman ever entrusted with it. She loved, she shoved the sword back into its worn leather scabbard. It will stay safe while in my care, even if that means my death. Tobble held up his paws. Fine. If you value a rustle, rusty blade over the life of my friend Bix, so be it. It's not that simple, Tobble, Kara said. It never is. Dairns are rare in this part of the world for a reason. They've been hunted to near extinction for their fur. It's amazingly soft, Tobble interjected. But there's something else at work here, something I don't understand. Kara chewed on a nail, lost in thought. What the Murdano's soldiers did at the Mirror Rare Hive. She looked at me, then looked away. Didn't make any sense. They were killing for killing's sake, and I don't know why. What I do know is that Ferrucci, at least, will value Bix as a living creature. He's a scientist, not a killer. This is Bix's best chance to stay alive. You have to trust me. From trust to dust, I muttered. Kara cocked her head. What did you say? It's a Darren saying. It means if you trust a human too completely, you'll end up as nothing but dust. And yet you have no choice. We fell into a cold and uneasy silence. Kara was the first to speak, and when she did, her voice was muted. <clears throat> Bix, she said, and then she added turning, and Tobble, you too. She inhaled deeply. You love your families, yes? Loved, I muttered, might be the more appropriate term. Kara gave a small, terse nod. Well, I love my family too, and it is my job to help them weather hard times, no matter what the cost. She locked her eyes on mine. I saw dark, deep pools of sadness. Whether it was my own gaze reflected in hers, I could not say. My family is in dire straits, Kara said. Her voice cracked. It was, vulnerable. it was a vulnerable sound, something I hadn't heard from her until now. Giving in like winter ice on a pond, tested too soon. My relatives are often hungry, she continued, ill, sometimes even desperate. When I can, I send them the few extra coins I've managed to collect for my work as a guide. Finding Bix means I have a chance to truly help them for the first time in my life. And it means helping Bix too. She shrugged. At least that's my hope. Your hope? Tobble demanded. Ferrucci is a good man, Tobble. Yes. He will probably pay me for bringing him one of the last of the dares. But he will also protect Bix. Kara rubbed her eyes. If a safe haven exists for her, Ferrucci is the one man who can find it. Kara reached toward Tobble and touched his so shoulder. The gesture of penance it seemed to me. I gotta find it, hold on. Aaron's. I can't do that for Bix, Tobble, and neither can you. I can try, Tobble said, which is more than you are doing. Kara exhaled, long and slow. We avoided each other's eyes. I have a different question for you. I finally said to Kara, when we get to the island, what will this Gari person do with Tobble? Oh, no one has much use for Wabix, Kara said, with an apologetic nod to Tobble. There, Maziti. Tobble snorted. What's Maziti? I asked. It was a word I didn't recall from my lessons. Kara looked incredulous, clearly surprised by my ignorance. 
Well, of course, there are six governing species. Humans, Rhapsodons, Phalipids, Terramids, Nitites, and Darens. That's according to the antique scrolls of the first Koimari. They are the species that can speak. I speak, Tobble interrupted, can speak, Kara continued, can make tools, can learn and pass along learning, are capable of theurgy. Unfair, Tobble grunt, grunt, grumbled. What use is theurgy anyway? Silly spells, magical potions, ridiculous visions. I wouldn't know, Kara said. The law decrees you must be 15 to begin training in theurgy. Darren's don't practice theurgy much, I said. Dalantor calls, called it a lost art. Women aren't allowed to study it, Kara said. Not anymore, anyway. Anymore, I repeated. Before this Murdano took power, some women were allowed to learn theurgy. My mother used to know of it. What are Mazidi? I asked again. Mizidi can't even perform the weakest theurgy. Mizidi are species like Wabix, Starlins, and Gorellus, Kara continued. They can communicate with humans and use tools, but they lack the ability to do magic. Tobble sighed loudly, totally unfair. The six great governing species may not prey on one another, according to the scrolls. At least that is the decree. Whether it is actually adhered to is another story, especially when it comes to my own species. Meanwhile, feel free to eat me, said Tobble. Below Miziti come all the species that cannot communicate with humans, use tools, or do magic. Kara said, the inferity, said Tobble. Yes, Kara nodded. Chimps, whales, crows, crickets, and so on, and so on, and on. She stood hands on hips. Well, that's enough for now. We should rest. I hate to waste a day, but you two are in no shape to travel. I have more questions, I said. Many more. I'm sure you do, said Kara. She looked at me with a strange mix of frustration and sympathy. Get some sleep. We've a long way to go. We'll leave tomorrow morning before dawn. Rest, I muttered, as if that were possible after all I'd just heard. And yet I looked over at Tabo. He was once again fast asleep. I wondered if the ability to sleep anywhere under any circumstance was a Wabic gift. Kara draped him with the blanket and handed me one as well. I wish I could do more for you, she said quietly. I really do. She wasn't lying. That much I could tell. But it was cold comfort indeed. Perhaps there is another way, I told myself. A way to avoid Ferrucci, to escape with Tabo, to find more Darns, to... I fell asleep, my mind whirring with plans, none of which seemed any better than the fate about to befall me. All right, guys, that's the end of the chapter. I love you. I'll talk to you soon.